Hello everyone and welcome to my new video and what is this video about? Well, what I'm going to do is try and explore ways in which I can take repetitive ideas and somehow evolve them over time so that they can kind of change but still retain some of their repetition and take like a very basic idea but somehow be able to take it on its own little journey by using things like probability and velocity to alter the pattern as it goes round to create these changes. Often on this channel, I kind of use a lot of random processes to find ideas, but but I want to kind of find a balance here between the two of having an interesting repetitive pattern, but then somehow developing it as it goes round using some MIDI tricks. And I'm going to do that right now. I've got this very sort of perfectly OK house beat. And I'm going to try and make a quick little bass line in meld. I'm going to do this all in meld because I'm quite, quite enjoying meld right now. So let's, um, let's turn the scale on. Let's set it to C Dorian and then let's maybe seed a pattern here. See what we get. All right. What's this? <laughs> okay. All right. That's fine. Let's put that down an octave. Maybe, maybe one more. Okay, let's go to the uh, span. No, wh which one is it? Connect? Uh, no, not connect. Is it span? Span, yes. And I like to apply this little sort of variation thing um, because it sort of ties a couple of notes over each other. Maybe I'll just put another note in here. Maybe that's a little bit too low. Let's go up. Okay, it doesn't really matter. It's, it's not going to be great music. It's about the idea. So let's start by just getting some interesting sound going with meld here. Let's just put this. Set this to mono. Let's turn uh, uh, oscillator B off. Okay, so I'm just going to very quickly select all the notes and pull the, uh, the velocity down all the way to zero. Now, most likely, the velocity is linked to the volume, as is often the case. I'm going to set that to zero so that the velocity doesn't change the volume. Now, you can obviously use velocity to control lots of things in any instrument um, inside the instrument's user interface. So here we can assign the velocity to whatever we want. So if I was to go to the envelope and say I want to uh, modulate the decay of this envelope here, I can click that and then back in the MIDI matrix, that is now available for me to assign to the velocity. But I'm not going to do that this time. What I'm actually going to do is just use expression control because I think it'll help visually to demonstrate what it is I'm trying to do. So I'm going to go to modulators. I'm going to go to expression control. Put that there and then you can use velocity. So I'm going to assign the velocity of the MIDI to this um, decay uh, thing <laughs> on the modulator. So let's go to remote, let's go to map and map that to the decay. Now, see what happens. <clears throat> let's turn that filter down a little bit. Watch what happens when I increase the velocity. See how the envelope gets longer now. If I pull it back down, it gets shorter. So if I was to apply some MIDI deviation to that, let's say all the way up. Every time a new note comes in, the velocity is going to get randomized and there will therefore randomize the decay of this envelope. You see it's doing it now there. So let's, let's assign that envelope to something in the matrix. So we've got, okay, we've got M envelope. That's the envelope. So if I click this filter frequency, we can assign it to the filter frequency. Let's set that to about 50 and this to about halfway. This is the silliest, this is the silliest dance music ever. <laughs> I wonder if I could maybe make a new pattern. This pattern's a bit more already not that impressed with it. Let's try this one. Okay, uh, if I set the pitch down here, let's try C1. Oh, that's very fiddly, that slider. There we go. And maybe set this to something like C3. That's a little bit better. Let's do... 
Okay, so it's also randomized the velocity. That's why let's pull that all back down. So again, to dem redemonstrate the point, the velocity all the way down, the decay is down all the way. And if I put the velocity all the way up, it's all the, the decay is all the way up. So if I put it in the middle and then apply some dip, sorry, if I put it all the way down and apply maximum deviation. Now, if we introduce the chance, then things can get even more interesting. If we give all the notes a 50% chance, if I can just make this a little bigger, oh my goodness me, right, yeah. If I select all the notes, give them all sort of 50% chance, then some of the notes will happen and some of them won't. some of the ones at the start a little bit more. Let's have a look at some other shapes here. Square sink. Wow. So we've got some stuff going on there where we're getting random notes in terms of when they actually happen. And when they do happen, they're going to randomize uh, like a parameter, which in this case, I've mapped the velocity to the um, envelope decay of this filter modulator. The state variable filter. I like it very much. It's very good. This, the, the, all these filters are really good. Really light meld. So we've taken like a really repetitive idea and just sort of taken it into a space where it can have a little bit of freedom to not be so repetitive. And of course, you could do this with anything. You could do it with some synthesized percussion. You could do it with samples, whatever. Now, I've done that all using the MIDI sequencer and using some of these features that are in Live 12 and they're in Live 11 as well. But now I want to try and do it using only MIDI devices so that you can actually control it live. Now, many years ago, I did a video called How to Do Probability in Ableton Without Max for Live using only um, stock MIDI devices in a MIDI effect rack. Um, which was a very popular video. It said 21,000 views from six years ago. Go and watch it. I already sound very different when you watch it. And then some years later, I did another video called Why I Hate Live 11, which was a joke. And I made a joke in that about how that they put some of these things like um, chants into the sequencer and how that made that video kind of redundant. However, it is not. And it was a joke. It was a clickbait joke. And actually, I'm going to revisit this idea, but develop on it. Can you see how I'm repeating myself, but evolving myself? and how that this video is a microcosm for something I'm going to apply to the entire content of this channel. Can you see what I did there? Can you see what I did? Anyway, let's close that. So let's take a copy of this, take a copy of this meld thing, turn that off and let's delete this expression control. And I'm going to remake that probability thing um, using Ableton MIDI effects, but I'm going to develop it a little bit. So first of all, we need to get a MIDI effect rack, put that in there. And then we're going to open up the chains. We're going to create a chain and we're going to duplicate that chain 127 times. So I'm going to hit duplicate, select all, 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 duplicate, select all. One more. Yes. Right. So now we have 128 chains, but actually I only need 127. So do we have that now? Yes, we do. So I'm going to go here, go distribute ranges equally. And I'm going to grab this last one and pull that all the way down like that. So we have this uh, list of chains and their velocities get bigger as you switch between the chains. Let's go to the chain selector, select all of these, pull them all out like that, go distribute ranges equally, leave that like that. And I'm going to map that to a macro. 
Okay, and then that is essentially going to be uh, how we're going to choose how much chance we have. Now I need to go and get the velocity plugin, put that in there. And m by default, my velocity plugin is set to just randomize all the velocities. And you can do that by setting that, right clicking and going save as default preset. I've done that. Because another thing I like to do on this channel is use velocity to do lots of crazy stuff. So now what's going to happen is that when this starts, we look at the velocity. Oh, we need to start the clip. Here we go. So you can see how you follow this, which chain is being selected. And that's because the MIDI, the incoming MIDI is being randomized with its velocity. And then that is essentially going to select which chain of these gets played. And if it, say, for example, plays this one, it's going to let all the notes through because the velocity range is full. It's like a gate. That's like a velocity gate. I've said let any type of velocity through. Whereas if we go for the first one, there's only one out of 127 possibilities that that might let the MIDI through. And so we access how much probability we want by selecting this chain. Uh, so if I select this chain here, nothing's going to come through pretty much. And then if I select the top chain, ah, so in the clip, we've actually still got some chance on the notes. So let's sort all this out. Let's turn that um, deviation down. Okay, so we're at minimum velocity. The velocity doesn't matter anymore. And the chance is at full. So let's, okay, so now that I'm on this chain, which we can see, if I go back down to, lowest chain very 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 little chance that midi is going to come through so let's put it all the way up okay that's fine let's get a, another midi uh, velocity plugin put that after this and i'm going to select all of these and i'm going to group these now let's collapse that down a bit okay so i'm going to now select this macro map that to macro one in this new group and i'm going to call that chance and then here I'm going to map this macro to macro 2 and I'm going to call that velocity if I spell that right yes and then this one the random here I'm going to set that to macro 3 just call that random right okay so now what we get is we get the same kind of control that we have in the sequencer in terms of being able to set velocities set how much we want to randomize those those velocities and set the chance, but we can control it here with macros. So you've kind of got like, rather than it being kind of predetermined by the sequencer, you can predetermine it with your hands and your decisions. So if I was to go back into meld and, and uh, maybe say this time that I do actually want to assign the velocity to the decay of this modulator, um, which is there. So I can say, set this to about 50 and set the envelope here to something like, well, the maximum is 40. The minimum is, it's very hard to know where the middle is. Let's just say it's there. Now, as I increase the velocity, you'll hear how that filter envelope is opening a little bit more. I pull it back down, it closes. Now we can apply the same type of MIDI velocity deviation as in the clip, but here with this uh, device. This is old. This is an old school device. You could do this probably in Live 4, maybe Live 5, certainly. So even though I'm doing this in Live 12, you can do this MIDI effect rack in probably any version of Live that has MIDI. So now as I increase the random here, we're going to get some deviation. <laughs> Let's try a different shape, different engine thingy. What do we got here? Uh, let's, let's just go back to the basic. Now, let's pull the chance down. Let's 
This will work with drums as well. So let's copy this rack and put it before the drums on this kit. See how it, I can control the velocity on the drums here. And bring the charts down. In fact, if you were sort of smart, you could layer up your drums and your synth into one instrument and control the whole jam with just, well, the, the probability of one whole jam, maybe. So this could be very good for live if you want to jam out like a sort of groove box idea, but have a little bit of physical control over things like the charts. You can do that using this super old trick. Okay, I think that's really everything I wanted to cover, really. Yeah, so you can hear how that pattern's going round and round and round, but it is sort of slightly different each time it goes round. So there's a nice little blend there between being random and being repetitive. So there you go. I hope you found that idea useful. I'm going to go and put this on my Patreon now, where if you'd like to support me there, you can download this set plus loads of other things and get involved in all kinds of cool stuff and meet lots of cool people and have a really nice time. And your financial support goes towards making more videos like this and indeed other things. And you get access to stuff that I don't do in videos. I try and post a live project or a max patch every other day. You can get pre-released versions of Max for Live devices that I make that you can test before they become commercially available. You can take part in Hangouts. You can do loads of stuff. Just go and do it. It's where all the cool kids are. Right. Thanks, everyone. See you next time. Bye.